Hey everybody, sorry if you were watching and suddenly we disappeared. It's because <laughs> we had a few technical problems, but that's it's what happens. It's been that kind of day. Yeah, that's what happens with Facebook Live. Anyway, um, welcome to this conversation with my favorite human being on the planet, my mm -hmm. husband Rick. And in this month, we're trying to talk about a mental health Awareness Month. We're trying to talk about all different aspects of mental health. And today I thought that Rick and I would just do more of a conversation about, um, <clears throat> pardon me, about, <clears throat> there we go, it's that kind of a day. <laughs> just about some stories, what it's been like for us, um, both as personally and then with um, a family member. And so um, this is my great husband, Rick. Hi, everybody. We're so glad that we could um, that he could fit this conversation in mm -hmm. for us today. So I really want you to know, though, as we start, that no matter what you're feeling today, it's important to know that that you are loved, yeah. that there's a purpose for your life, mm -hmm. that you belong in God's mm -hmm. family. Mm -hmm. They have some choices, and you are so desperately needed in this world. So no matter what you are feeling, we want you to know that those are some things you can hold on to. Mm -hmm. So I'll just start a little bit with kind of um, my story of depression. I've lived with a low level of depression all of my life. I really don't remember a time that I wasn't living with depression. I didn't know it was depression. I didn't even know such a thing existed, yeah. you know, 50 bazillion years ago. Nobody talked about it. I was a little kid. I just knew I felt sad sometimes. And it wasn't sad related to the things that were going on in my life. It wasn't sad related to, you know, a breakup with a boyfriend or, um, you know, a bad grade at school. I just felt sad. And it would usually last two or three days. And it used to kind of scare me because it, it almost just felt like my world just got very small mm. and that mm. the color went out of, of a day. That's and, descriptive. Yeah. And yeah. then when we got married, I started calling it, you know, was I would try to describe to him what yeah. was going on with me. We started calling it my existential angst because those <laughs> are those were the days that I would say, is there any meaning to life? Does anything matter? You know, it. and I'm not making fun of depression mm. because depression can be so serious that it's lethal. And debilitating. Debilitating and lethal. Yeah. But for me, it was more at that low level level yeah. where I just I just sometimes for a couple days at a time would feel sad. What I learned for me as an adult is that it would pass. So I've never been on medication for depression. I'm absolutely in favor of it. It's mm -hmm. just for me, I knew that it was short lived. It would last a couple days and it would be it never interfered with my daily life. I call it, you know, on a spectrum of um if my kind of depression was like a sinus headache, yeah. um, some people live with depression. So there's this like this constant, it's so severe, it's like a pounding migraine headache that mm. never lets up. That's my good. depression was more like just a little sinus headache that a Tylenol could fix. Um, but mm. others, and some of you are watching this, man, depression for you is, mm -hmm. it's incapacitating. And we have great empathy for that. Absolutely. And, and um, Absolutely. in the in the one that we were talking about a few minutes ago mm. that got deleted because of the technical problems, <laughs> you were talking about how sometimes people have just a general feeling. Yeah, what the kind of depression that Kay's talking about, and of course I've seen it in you uh, all of our 40, almost 43 years of marriage now, uh, is a general depression. It's not tied to anything specific. Right. It's not tied to uh, a, a conflict, a circumstance, a choice. It's not tied to a relationship. It, you just have this general sense of sadness. Mm -hmm. And a, a large percentage of people struggle with this general uh, uh, depression. If you don't, my guess is you uh, suffer at some times or struggle with either general anxiety or general anger. Yeah. Because these are three big, very common things. A, a lot of people have general anxiety, and that is it's a sense of just being fearful or worried mm -hmm. or anxious, but there's no real reason that you can pin it to. It's not like I just got fired or or I'm I'm afraid of just feel a little on edge. It's not a it's not a, yeah it's, it's just you're on edge. That's a good word to saying it, and you feel anxious and uh, and maybe a little nervous and maybe a little fearful, and, and that's a general anxiety. And then some people actually have uh, general anger, yeah. which is you just feel irritated all the time or irritable, just irritable, just and just and that. you know nothing seems to fit right, or and you just have kind of a a sour attitude sometimes, and you're wondering what, what's making me angry. What's and these these are not specific to circumstances, like what somebody said to you, right, or something like well, that. Well, I, what I think 
I think what we're trying to say here is, um, or what we're what we're pointing out is that um, mental illness can really does occur across a spectrum, mm -hmm. and um, sometimes yeah. it can be at a. I mean, we all feel stressed sometimes. We mm -hmm. all feel anxious. We all feel worried. We all get angry. We all feel sad. Those are normal human emotions. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That's just that comes with being a human. Right. And it, it, we're made in the image of God, and God is an emotional God, so we're going to have emotions. Right. But what, what we're talking about when it crosses over into what might be classified as a mental illness is when it starts interfering with your daily yeah, life. Yeah. It starts interfering with your relationships. It starts interfering with you can't get up and can't get out of bed to go to work or you can't get a task done at work mm -hmm. because you're you're so anxious or you're so worried that, that it's going to go wrong or that you're you're upset. So when it starts moving into that place that it's affecting your daily life and mm -hmm. relationships and mm -hmm. um, job, school, then that's a time to really pay attention. Right. So right. you... Let, let me say a word yeah, about that, babe. Um, it's when it becomes debilitating. It, it's overwhelming. I, I want to reiterate what Kay just said. Um, Emotions are actually given to us by God, even the negative ones. Uh, the reason we have emotions is because God is an emotional God. And the Bible says we're made in his image. God gets angry. The Bible says God gets jealous. The Bible says God gets sad. When he sees things in the world that make him sad, he sees a, root, a, a, a rape, an abuse, right. A, right. a molestation. He's right. sad at that. He weeps. He weeps. Yeah. Uh, God gets frustrated. God gets angry. So these are there are legitimate places for all of these emotions. We're not saying to be mentally healthy, you don't have any emotions. Right. In fact, I would say just the opposite. It's when you stuff those emotions, then it can become more debilitating when we let those emotions freeze. Let me just say it in a sentence. Feelings are meant to be felt. Mm. They're meant to be by their very nature. Now, the second corollary to that is no feeling lasts. Mm. That's important. Okay. Very important. Really important. No fe every feeling by its nature cannot last. I don't care how good it is or how bad it is. Your highest high on going to a Disneyland or being at a party or you know having somebody kiss you or any kind of high... That's not going to last, and any kind of low right. uh, is not going to last. And, and the problem is we typically, when we're feeling a particular emotion, we think, I'm going to feel this way the rest of your life. Yeah. That's when it starts becoming debilitating, starts setting in. So feel the emotion. Don't, don't stuff it. Don't repress it. Don't suppress it. Express it and confess it to God. Uh, that's the healthy thing. The unhealthy, when it starts making us more and more ill, is we bottle it up. And that's like taking a Coke can, shaking it up, and it's putting it in the refrigerator or the freezer. Because it's going to freeze, and frozen emotion will explode. Let me just give you an example. Early in our marriage, I was hospitalized for depression. Yeah. And um, I remember I was in, in a hospital bed. I was so depressed, I was uh, immobilized. And I had to be actually put in a physical hospital. And I remember a psychiatrist coming in to me. And, of course, I had no awareness of myself in those days. I didn't know even how to name an emotion, much less handle it correctly. And I remember the, the doctor came in, the psychiatrist came in, and he said to me, so what are you angry about? And I said, well, I'm not angry. I'm sad. He goes, well, sometimes, not all the time, sometimes uh, depression can be caused by frozen anger. And as I started dealing with it, there were some things. But the point is, well, yeah, we were, is that it was debilitating. Yeah, we were, you know, we'd been married a couple of months. We were brand newlyweds. Brand new. And our marriage was already in the toilet, <laughs> <laughs> to put it mildly. It was not going well. And Can you say, hell on earth? Yeah, yeah, it was bad. We loved each other. Yeah, but it was bad. I wasn't, it, even, sh I wasn't even sure. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't sure I you loved me either. I loved much at that so. moment either. Um, <laughs> But it was it was just really bad. We didn't know how to communicate. We no. didn't know how to deal with emotions. And and you you just sh kind of shut down with yeah. that. Let me say and something about that, and then you come back to you. I'll Mar forget my thought. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I've already forgotten it. That's oh, right. Marriage doesn't create problems; it reveals them. Yeah. And we bring our mental issues into yeah, marriage. Absolutely. Okay. And 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 when my mental health issues, you know, clash against your mental health issues. Right. 
we two imperfect people can't make a perfect relationship. Yeah, sparks flew, and they weren't the good kind of sparks. <laughs> <laughs> they were the painful kind of sparks. I think what I was going to say was that relating to what that doctor had said to you about mm -hmm. that we didn't, you were angry right. at how at how messed up our mm -hmm. marriage was mm -hmm. right from the start. Mm -hmm. But you didn't, we didn't know how to express that. We didn't know how to communicate that, yeah. and so you really did just hold on to it. And so when he said you're angry, you're like. Mm -hmm angry no that's not an approach yeah. i can't i can't be angry i'm a christian All right we didn't understand of course that you can be angry well a, a disappointment was appropriate but swallowing my disappointment right. was not appropriate so just kind of circling back around sure. to where i was going initially was that some of the things that you've learned mm -hmm. about like that a feeling doesn't last right you know feeling you may feel whatever it is but it's not going to they're meant on. to be felt but they're going to be waves but you learned yeah. that mm -hmm. in some particular situations I did. related to I did. some anxiety and exactly. depression that you've experienced. Yeah, while Kay has struggled with um, depression, low-level depression, I, I struggled with uh, low-level fears and phobias. Uh, and, and actually, sometimes they were very strong, yeah. not, not even low-level. They yeah. were high-level uh, when they would be overwhelming. I never let them stop me from doing something I, I was supposed to do. In other words... I always did what I feared, but I was miserable. Yeah. And and part of it was, and we'll get into this later, is that I was only trying to attack it from a counseling, cognitive viewpoint, right. rather than biological right. or, or spiritual. A lot, a lot of different angles to these things. And we'll get into that later, that, that um, your brain is the most complex organ in your body. And so when your brain doesn't work right, it's a complex issue, and there's rarely just one solution. Don't go to the solutions yet. I'm not getting there. I'm just, saying, the I'm just saying that at that point, uh, I didn't even know how to get there. Right. And um, can I tell the first story, year of the church story? Is that all right or not? <laughs> yes, dear, you may. <laughs> Thank you. The brief version. The brief version. Well, when we started Saddleback Church, I loved every moment of it. We were working 18 hours a day. The office was in our home. And we really, I really was a workaholic. And on the last Sunday of the year, I stood up to teach, and I fainted. And it scared me to death. And it sent me into depression and into serious phobias. Um, and I thought, um, everything's good. I'm going to be a failure. And the phobias, just to, you know, kind of unpack that a little yeah. bit, the, the phobias were? Well, a speaking, a fainting in front of others again. Right. Okay, I had fainted once, and it was very embarrassing. And yet you're a pastor. Exactly. So mm -hmm. that left you what? You could either have just resigned. I could have fear. resigned and run from the fear, yeah. or I could do everything I could to get help. And we're going to talk about that and the kinds of help that you can get in this day. Now, I will tell you this, that a lot of times trauma can bring on mm -hmm. mental illness. Mm -hmm. That was an incredibly traumatic thing to faint in front of an, a church full of people, and you're the only staff member, right. and it felt like it's all on you. So that's very traumatic, and and recovery from trauma can take years. Right. So we're not talking about and I'll, I actually the next year I was depressed most of the years. You remember 1981, mm -hmm. and it wasn't my goal was not oh God build a great church. It was God get me through Sunday. Can I put one foot in front of the other? And I would prepare, prepare the message, teach it, be scared, go home and get in bed, and I would be basically in bed till Monday. Um, during that time, God gave me a Bible verse that is, I think, very appropriate for our discussion today. And it's when Joshua was getting ready to take the people of Israel into the promised land. Moses had died. He's scared. He's on his alone. And in Joshua 1, God has to three times say, don't be afraid and don't be depressed. Don't be afraid. Don't be depressed. I'm going to be with you. And he says, I'm not going to give you this land all at once, but I'm going to drive the giants out little by little so that you will be able to handle it. And I call that pacing growth. He didn't say I'm going to give it all the land at once because you're not ready to even handle all that. But we're going to handle it little by little. I think Christian growth, spiritual growth, mental health is little by little. Mm. Pacing growth. It's one step. There's, I'm sorry, but there's no one pill 
that's going to cure right. all my ills or all your ills or anybody right. else's. Okay, there's not one therapy. There's it's little by little, and God will drive out the giants mm. in your life, mm. and it could be the giant of fear, the giant of depression, the giant of confusion, uh, the, the any other kind of uh, mental or emotional uh, mm. problems that we deal with. Yeah, uh, you know you're you've talked about this in probably the last 10 years mm -hmm. about the panic um, attacks that, that you lived with for mm -hmm. about 20 years. Yeah. So we're not talking, you know, oh, you, you, you had a panic attack and mm -hmm. then it was, um, oh, okay, I'll just keep going. I mean, we're talking that this was, this was a pervasive issue that you struggled with. It's one of the things I think that I have um, mm -hmm. learned to mm -hmm. admire and respect mm -hmm. you so much for mm -hmm. it's because um, even with um, a panic disorder that was, mm -hmm. I mean, nobody will really know mm -hmm. how difficult mm -hmm. it was for you for so many years to stand up. You were, mm -hmm. you were a preacher, you were a pastor, and every weekend you mm -hmm. stood up mm -hmm. and you preached. And the agony that mm -hmm. you went through, you had panic attacks throughout. And I, I, I learned by watching him, I could tell, um, you know, if he pulled out a handkerchief and, right. you know, like wiped his face, I knew I needed to really pray because mm -hmm. that meant that you would tell me later, I couldn't see the audience. Right. You know, it's like they were, it was just blackness in front of my face. Right. And, and the way that you, um, you know, you powered through that in some ways that, that other people, mm -hmm. I don't know that they could have, mm -hmm. but, but eventually you found I'm just some, stubborn. you, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But in a good way in that one. That was, yeah. that was, but Endurance. I, yeah, I don't, I still don't quite know how yeah. you did that mm -hmm. because it was, it was pervasive and it was debilitating. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but you found some relief. So yeah, just and, go and ahead and tell a little sure. bit about what brought some relief. Well, to I, and I'll say this. Things you've learned. Whatever is, is, um, I will say torturing you. And sometimes you feel tortured. Yeah. We feel tortured by our thoughts, by our emotions, uh, by things like that. Don't give up. What Kay said, it began, don't give up. There are answers out there. The fact that you're watching this right now and you're going to share this with somebody who could use it is important mm -hmm. uh, because there is hope. Um, and I, uh, even when I'd hit a dead end, I would not give up. Okay. And uh, as I said, we'll come back to the different forms that I Go use. Go ahead and just say, because I think it's really applicable okay, here okay. to what, how you found, what were the steps, what sure, were the sure. things that you did. Sure the various ways that you approached okay. that and found some relief. Well, you're not just uh, a body. You are a body, you're a soul, you're a spirit, you have a mind, you have a will, you have emotions. So they're different parts of you. And what that means is that mental health, all of that's involved in mental health. There's a spiritual component, my relationship to God. But prayer's not enough. Right. It's not enough. Man, we were on our faces. No, no, no. I was praying God every day. Yeah. And uh, there's God. a biological component, component. If your chemistry is off, all of the counseling in the world by itself by itself yeah. will not will not correct that. Yeah. So you got to get your chemistry balanced. There is a psychological part where you have to talk out and you have to you can't solve a problem till you diagnose it. You can't you can't solve a problem till you admit it. And to admit it, I gotta be able to name it. The moment you're able to name something, you start gaining some control of it. The moment you can say, I tend to get depressed. I tend to get fearful. I tend to get angry. I, I tend to, uh, be confused and not know, uh, is this me or is this me? Uh, in, in the splits in me. And, and the moment you start naming it, you already get some control. And the moment you can start, if you can't talk about what you're feeling, it's out of control in your life. But the moment you share it with somebody, that is the moment of liberation. Yeah. I want that in your life. And so you you did exactly that. Yeah, well, the first thing I did, obviously, is I went to the Lord. And I started praying. And I, and I actually remember we took the kids out to, to Phoenix and... And I kind of had my desert experience. Your folks lived oh, there. Back yeah. after that first year. In, in, in 1980. Yeah. At the end of 1980, 81. Yeah. And uh, I kind of had a desert experience alone with the Lord. 
And that was good. And that's where God gave me that verse. I'm going to drive the giants out little by little. So I knew God was on my side. And you can know this, that in your journey to health, God is on your side. He is for you. He's not against you. He's with you. With that, I could keep going. Yeah. Um, I went to counselors. Mm-hmm. Um, I tried medicines. Mm-hmm. Some of those medicines were, did not work. Right. In fact, most of them didn't work, right. if you remember. Right. And, and I'm going, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going, the th- physical, right. uh, eat right, get in shape, but take medicine, um, spiritual, therapy. uh, therapy, uh, uh, counseling, and all of that. And so you, you team tackle it. There's some problems, like on a football field, a player's so big, one guy can't take him down. It takes two or three people to tackle. And that's why one of the keys is community. Before you right. go back to that, mm-hmm. I mean, before you, yes, that's true. Let's, let's circle back around to that. Sure, well, I'm just, just, we're just giving you the index. <laughs> but but you eventually did find a medication. I did. That was very very helpful. That changed. It was a game changer. I don't you. know why it took so long. I don't think they had invented the medicine. Probably not. Uh, actually, when I first started having the, the severe yeah. panic and the severe fear, but you did find a medication that helped. But before that, mm-hmm. you had years where you were just out there trying everything you could think of. And one of the things that that. Um, has really impressed me that I learned from you at the time and that you and I have practiced we taught our kids which was the the whole are you going to cover this later about um, your thoughts because if so I'll wait but that was just before the medication kicked mm-hmm, in mm-hmm. you had to survive and there were some things you mm-hmm. learned how yes. to survive one of the survival techniques that's very important I think for any kind of mental health issue is learning how to calm yourself whether I'm anxious or afraid, or depressed, or angry, or or confused. I need to learn how to calm myself. The fastest way to learn to calm yourself is to learn how to breathe slow. Mm-hmm. And actually, I won't go into this into detail, but I, I really do have a, an unusual brain. I've been told this by Mayo Clinic and others. <laughs> uh, I, one doctor told me of 80,000 scans, it was the hottest brain he'd ever seen, so I'm hot, babe. Yeah, I agree. And uh, But he said it doesn't want to shut down, and part of it is adrenaline affects me in the wrong way. Adrenaline is our friend. If you're a public speaker, you're boring without adrenaline. But adrenaline was like poison to my brain. And so every time I would get up to speak, I get a shot of adrenaline. It did the wrong thing, not the right thing. Now, I'm not talking about stage fright. No. Okay. I'm, not, I, I'm not talking about that's Full normal. on panic I'm, That's normal. I've spoken to crowds of over a million people in the Superdome and places like that. So it's not stage fright, but it's a, when that, and it would hit, hit at any time if somebody scares you or, you know, surprises you. Um, and there were some physical conditions that Kate uh, mentioned. And I told the Lord when we started Saddleback, I could teach one service, but I could never do two. Because that would mean a hill and a valley. And a spike in adrenaline, and then back down. And then we went to two services. <laughs> then we went to three. Then we went to four. Then we went to five. And then we went to six. And I did six services every weekend for almost a decade. And that meant high, low, high, low, high, low. And I literally, to get through that, had a bed backstage, turn the temperature down to about 60 degrees, meat locker. <laughs> Kate would always freeze. I felt like I had icicles hanging from my nose. And I literally would go back, lay down on that bed between services, and I would, number one, relax myself, talk to the Lord, uh, calm myself. Well, and I think and do, one, one thing do, that was so important about that is before, you, Long before I got medicine. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. The strategies mm-hmm. before and for mm-hmm. the people who are, you know, you've tried a particular medication and it hasn't really helped. And then you've tried another medication. Right. It hasn't particularly helped. And, yeah, don't give up. But also some strategies you can learn along the way to help you mm-hmm. that will um, bring some relief and, and help you cope with. But I think the thing that I'm referring to, I was trying to get to, get to without just, just telling say it. you, is just the, what you learned about renewing your mind. And, and how you, what you do with your thoughts. Yeah. Um, what you were able to do mm-hmm. with your thoughts, mm-hmm. even though mm-hmm. when you were in moments of panic, your thoughts right. were going a million directions and most of them were not logical, mm-hmm. they weren't reasonable, and, and so you had to learn some things about renewing mm-hmm. your mind. One of the most important verses in the Bible uh, says that we are to bring every thought into captivity 
We are to bring every thought into captivity. What does that mean? It means control your thoughts. Okay, now, every moment, God has given you ideas. That's called an inspiration. The devil's giving you ideas. That's called temptation. You're having your own ideas. And so, and sometimes you can't even figure out which is which. Right. Okay, that's, that's, don't worry about that. Right. Okay. Um, but you can control your thoughts. And now here's one of the most important things you need to get in this session. It's this. You don't have to believe everything you tell yourself. Just because you think it doesn't make it true. You don't have to believe everything you say to yourself. Now, the Bible says the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Now, what does deceitful mean? It means it lies. Now, when it talks about heart in the Bible, it's talking about your brain. Because we used to think that thoughts were in the heart. Right. But we, not, we say, I love you with all my right. heart, but really, we, I love you your with all my brain. Your heart doesn't feel anything No, 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 your yeah. brain is what does the loving. Right, right. So when you see the word heart in the Bible, think brain, okay? Because I love you with my brain. And the Bible says, bring, uh, b control the issues of your heart, which means control the thoughts of your mind. You do have a choice. And just because you think it doesn't mean it's true. Just because you think it doesn't mean you have to believe it. You can choose to not believe it. When I says the heart is deceitful, it means we lie to ourselves more than we lie to anybody else. I lie to myself more than I lie to anybody else. And you do too. Because sometimes we tell ourselves things are better than they really are. And sometimes we tell ourselves they're worse mm -hmm. than they really are. You may feel like things are... It couldn't get any worse. But there's always something to thank God for. Right. Okay? And that's a choice. So I can choose to think on things that are, the Bible gives eight things, positive, you know, thoughtful, mm -hmm. beautiful. good, beautiful, pure, pure, lovely. pure, lovely. Philippians chapter 4. Or I can choose to think on the things that are depressing me, making me angry, making me fearful, things like that. Now, here's how you do it. You don't resist it. You replace it. Mm. With a thought, you don't resist it. You replace it. Whatever you resist persists. Now watch this. Kate, put your hand out. Right. See, when I push up against her hand, she starts pushing back. Why? It's just natural. If you start pushing against your fear, what are you focusing on? Your fear. If you start put, I don't want to be depressed. I don't want to be depressed. I don't want to be... You're focusing on your depression. I don't want to be confused. I don't want to be confused. I don't... You're focusing on your confusion. I don't want to panic. I don't want to panic. You, you don't resist it. You replace it. And, and think of your mind as a TV. You just turn the channel. Okay? In other words, if I'm watching something on TV and it's upsetting me, or it's causing lust, or anger, or depression, or fear, I don't go, I don't want to watch this, I don't want to watch this, I don't want to watch this. <laughs> I just turn the channel. Yeah. Okay, and so the way you get rid of a bad thought, this is extremely important, is replace it. Not resist it. I don't want this, I don't want this, I don't want this. Now you're focusing on, the, it's like, I don't want to smoke, I don't want to smoke. You, you replace it, and that's changing the channel. Mm -hmm. Renewing your mind. Renewing your mind, and you, of course do it with the Bible. Scriptures yeah. are the best thing to fill your mind with. Let me give you another illustration before you go. In your mind, there's a there's a... Uh, 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 scales. And these are the positive thoughts and these are the negative thoughts. These are the good, these are the bad. These are the happy, these are the sad. And every day you think a thought, you put a pebble on either scale. Now some of you, you put so many negative thoughts on this side, it's like this. And that's called depression. And if you've had a trauma, somebody just dropped a boulder on that. That's a trauma. Boom. Now, you're going to have to put a lot of good thoughts on this side. You're going to have to choose to, to, to bring it back up. And, 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 and as you put the more positive affirmations and thoughts you put over here, the more it starts evening up. And when you get like this, you're not happy. You just feel neutral. But that's better than this. Right. Okay? Like, I, I, I don't feel happy, but I'm not right. suicidal. I'm not in despair. 
And the more you do this, that's renewing your mind, as Kay said, you tip the scales, and one day it'll go more like this, and you'll, your attitudes will be different. Yeah, and I, I think, I think it's really important to point out that, that we're not saying mm. that, um, if you have a mental illness, it is your choice. And it's because you're thinking bad thoughts or you're not taking charge of your thoughts. And that's why you have a mental illness. Mm -hmm. I mean, you didn't choose to have a mental illness. We, we know that. You right. didn't choose to have panic attacks. Right. Um, I don't choose well, to have... What's a character issue? No, it's not character. I didn't choose to have depression. Yeah. I think what we're trying to point out, it's that dance. That's, it's always that dance in, within mental illness is what are the things that I need, um, if you have schizophrenia, for instance, putting writing good thoughts on a card not and enough. repeating them is not by no, itself no. going to be That's enough. That's why we say complex. Absolutely. And so there's going to be a need. If you have um, severe bipolar, right. there may be some times in which your thoughts are just not even reasonable mm -hmm. or logical. And so there's a the place where medication comes in mm -hmm. and helps biochemically to alter mm -hmm. the the ability of your body then to, I call it, it's establishing a platform. Sometimes medication mm -hmm. is like a platform mm -hmm. that then you can build off of. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it adds a layer of skin. If you feel particularly raw and vulnerable, medication can sometimes add kind of like this layer of skin so that then you can go from there. And so for you, mm -hmm. um, in the years before mm -hmm. that they found an effective medication. I tried them, all the other things and they weren't enough. And so, and so what mm -hmm. the way that you coped, I mm -hmm. mean, you still had panic attacks, right. but the way that you coped with them mm -hmm. was you learned about how to renew mm -hmm. your mind. And you made some choices right. to, to learn how to renew your mind. Choices are one of the five things right. that make you you. Uh, you have your chemistry, okay? That's, that's your chemistry. And all of us have right. different chemistry. Right. Okay? Um, your character is not your chemistry. Right. Your chemistry is not your character. I've said this many times. It's not a sin to be sick. And your illness is not your identity. You may struggle with a mental illness, but that's not your identity. Right. Okay? Your identity is you're a child of God. You're not a depressive. You're no, not no, a no, manic no, depressive. No. You're not a schizophrenia. You are a person yeah. who lives with depression. You're a person. Exactly. The emphasis first is on you're a person. Right. This is a difference between Celebrate Recovery, which started at Saddleback, and a lot of other addiction programs. In other addiction programs, people will stand up after 25 years. They'll say, hi, my name is Bob, and I'm an alcoholic. Maybe they haven't had a drink for 25 years, but they're still identifying with their struggle. Mm -hmm. And I go, no, 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 that's not your primary identity. So at Celebrate Recovery, we don't let people stand up and say, hi, I'm Bob and I'm an alcoholic. They stand up and say, hi, I'm Bob and I'm a follower of Jesus Christ, or I'm a child of God who struggles with alcohol. See the difference? Huge difference. Yep. My primary identity is in whose I am, mm -hmm. not what I struggle with. And this that's part of that's, changing your mind. That's gigantic. That's part of changing that, your mind. That's an earth shaking mm. concept to develop mm -hmm. is to to know mm -hmm. who you are mm -hmm. and whose you are mm -hmm. and that um, I, I think that's one of the problems one of the deep struggles with mental illness is the shame mm -hmm. there's stigma that mm -hmm. that other people mm -hmm. put on us or put mm -hmm. on you and it keeps people from getting help it keeps people from um, talking about it but there's the self stigma the belief within ourselves yeah. that because I have this struggle because mm -hmm. I have this illness I'm not worth as much. I right. am not as valuable. Right. If other people knew, they wouldn't want me. They wouldn't like me. I'm mm -hmm. damaged goods. Mm -hmm. I'm a freak. I mean, those are all the things that um, when you live with a mental illness, those are those are the labels that we put on ourselves. Mm -hmm. And this self shaming, yeah, and and that also keeps us hidden. It keeps us isolated. It keeps us from sharing our true self. It keeps us from finding the joy that can that is still present yeah. because we know that we belong to God. God is at work in us. We are his first. When we talk about um, in the mental health ministry at Saddleback and in, in the hope circle, uh, the very first thing in the hope circle is you are loved. Mm -hmm. And and so rather than, oh, you have depression, mm -hmm. you have schizophrenia, you have an eating disorder, you have anxiety. No, you are loved by God. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. from that place, then mm -hmm. that becomes where we start working with who we are mm -hmm. and 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 the illnesses that we might live with. You know, before we get to the end of this, I want to go back to these five things I started on that four of them you can't control, one of them you can. 
The four things you can't control, there you have no legitimate reason to feel shame over any of these because you can't control them. How can you feel guilty or ashamed or uh, for something you had no control over? First, you didn't control your chemistry. That's you're basically right. who you are. That's your chemistry, okay? Um, it was given to you, and we all, all everybody has a broken body. It's the effect of living in a broken world. Exactly. So we all have broken minds. We all struggle with different kinds of mental issues, no doubt about it. So there's your chemistry. You can't feel guilty over that or shame because it, it was given to you, okay? Second is, are your connections. And that's what I'm talking about, the relationships you grew up with. Now, you can choose your relationships now yeah. as an adult, and you can choose good ones or bad ones. Uh, but you didn't choose the ones you grew up with. You can't feel, and many people had trauma as children right. that struggle, that affects our brains. Literally, we know actually forms and shapes our brains. Mm -hmm. So your chemistry and your connections, that's your, your relationships early on in life. Then the third is your circumstances. Mm -hmm. uh, if you served in a war and had... PSTD. PTSD. PTSD. I will get that one wrong. <laughs> Too many initials. Uh, or, or, or you had a trauma in your life of some kind. You don't need to feel ashamed about that. Right. The person who caused it should feel ashamed, but not you. Right. That abuse. Right. Or, or whatever. Uh, and then the first, the fourth is, um, your consciousness. And what I'm talking about there, that's the thoughts that come through your mind. You can't control what thoughts come through your mind. You can control what you do with them. In other words, I don't know if you've ever done this, if you're a Christian, have you ever been praying and all of a sudden the vilest thought comes <laughs> through your mind while you're praying? Oh, it's and awful. And you're going, oh, and you start feeling ashamed like you thought that up. Right. Martin Luther said, you can't stop the birds from flying over your head, but you can keep them from building a nest in your hair. And so a thought can come through my mind like, punch that guy. But that was just, that was a, a, an attraction. It wasn't an action. It was an attitude that I have to choose whether it's going to become, uh, let me just talk to men for a minute. Um, attraction and lust are not the same. If I see somebody, boy, she's attractive. It's what I do with that. I just immediately switch my mind to something else. Then I, then I'm not guilty over being attracted right. to, it's not, it's, whatever. Yeah. Okay. It's the way so, we're made. It's, so your consciousness or the constant flow going through your right. mind. But what you do have control over are the choices. That's not, you cannot control all these things, but you can control these. Now, in a, in a five card poker game, you could have a, a not a very good hand, but if you've got a wild card over here, it can change these. It'll allow you to change, you know, in, in some card games, you can change what they are. And so, hear us again. You do have a choice. And you, you need to make healthy choices. But you're not responsible for all the stuff you couldn't choose. And so you don't feel ashamed of that. Right. I, I think I want to, as we kind of wrap this up, I think I, I want to just say something to those of you that live with some pretty severe um, mm -hmm. mental illness and are trying to follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. I, I have, we have the most utmost respect for mm -hmm. those of you who um, live with a severe mental illness. And I cannot even imagine how difficult it is to follow Jesus when it never mm -hmm. feels good. I mean, mm -hmm. I talk about my low levels mm -hmm. of depression mm -hmm. and there are some days it doesn't feel good to follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel good to have faith. It doesn't mm -hmm. feel good. I have a hard time believing in mm -hmm. hope. I have a hard time believing that good things are going to happen. But those are momentary mm -hmm. um, blips on the screen for me. For some of you, it just never gets any better. And yet you are still trying to follow Jesus mm -hmm. and um, and love him and honor him. And so for you to follow Jesus mm -hmm. when it doesn't feel good hardly ever, uh, my heart goes out to you. I, I have the most uh, mm -hmm. utmost respect for you. Mm -hmm. And we just want you to know that um, we are praying for you. And we're going to mm -hmm. pray at the end. Rick, I'll have mm -hmm. you um, okay. close this with okay. prayer for people who are living maybe kind of on that yeah. edge. But as we close, I just want to give you some practical kind of next steps or places Good. where you can go for Great. some support. Great. And if, if you live here in Southern California, you are most welcome to join us um, on Sunday, May the 27th. 
from 1 to 3 p.m. in Tent 3 at Saddleback Lake Forest. It's our monthly gathering for people. Um, it's a safe gathering place. If you are living with mental illness or you're a family member or you're someone who cares about people who live with mental illness, you're welcome. It's a time where you get to, you're going to have some table time where you get to talk, you yeah. get to share your thoughts, share your You do this heart. every month. Every month, fourth mm -hmm. Sunday of the month. Mm -hmm. And um, so you're welcome. Please join us. And you can... Um, um, register. There'll be a, a website there where mm -hmm. you can register for that event. A second thing would be this um, a, a tool that's called Journey Toward Hope. And um, Journey Toward Hope is is based on I've referred to it the Hope Circle, and it's these it's these beliefs that these these truths that that you might say to yourself, I hate myself. I mean, really, honestly, we've all had mm -hmm. those moments. But the truth is, you're loved. Mm -hmm. You might say to yourself, I don't matter. But the Hope Circle and Hope says you have a purpose. You might say, I don't fit in, but the truth is, from Scripture, you belong. You might want to say, I want to give up. I can't do this anymore. And Hope Circle, you have a choice. Mm -hmm. And then um, say, you know, I feel useless. I don't have anything to contribute. Mm -hmm. I'm really not mm -hmm. needed. The truth is, you are needed. Mm -hmm. So this journey toward hope is an experiential experiential. Um, it's not a journal. It's kind of a cross between a journal and an ex experiential. Um, it's got a workbook component it's to it. Sort of, and a, it's got and it leads you. Yeah, it's got. And there's if you would like to gather with you know several other people and go through it together. There's a free um, discussion guide that mm -hmm. you can find at kwarren.com. It's mm -hmm. a free download. Mm -hmm. You can get together with three or four of you. Go through the journey toward hope book together. That's one thing. Mm -hmm. Then also there are some support groups that we would really encourage you to look at. There's Mental Health Grace Alliance. Mm -hmm. uh, Mental Health Grace Alliance is all over the country um, with some great groups for both individuals and family members. There's also yeah. Fresh Hope, um, and that's um, online support groups. And then Celebrate Recovery. Mm -hmm. And you could go to CelebrateRecovery.com and find a Celebrate Recovery in your area. And then NAMI. Uh, we, I love NAMI. The National Alliance on Mental Illness has so many free resources. You can trust the information on group. their site. So NAMI.org. Um, so as we close, I want you to pray, but just want you to know that, that we love you, that you are not alone. Um, mm -hmm. God loves you, and there is always hope. Mm -hmm. Would you just close this with I prayer? I sure will. Katie, I want to add a word about when you talked about when you have a hard time feeling close to God because of your mental illness. My heart goes out to you. And when, um, when you go, I can't hear God, that's when you need other people yeah. in your life. Yeah. That's when you need community. Yeah. One of the most beautiful verses in the Bible is in Job, where it says, A man deserves the devotion of his friends, mm -hmm. even when he forsakes the Almighty. There are some times in your life, your mental illness may cause you to go, I don't even know if I believe in God right now. That's when you need people who go, we will believe God for you. We'll put you on the stretcher. We'll carry you. You're not going to get well on your own. You need other people. You need community. God wired us that we only grow and we only heal through relationships. We don't do it on our own. So revealing your feeling is the beginning of healing. You need to get in a small group. If you're in Southern California, we have over 8,000 small groups from Santa Monica to San Diego. We can get you in a group. You need to build. You don't need a lot of friends in life. But you do need a couple good ones who are going to love you unconditionally. And when you go, I can't hear God right now. That's okay. We'll hear God for you. Yeah. I can't feel that. That's okay. We'll feel God for you. I don't even know if I believe in God. That's what community is all about. That's what Saddleback's here for. And that's what other churches are here for too. Yeah. So find a good healing community. Yeah. Let's pray. Father, I don't know all who's listening right now, but you do. You've seen every tear that fell. You've seen every scary moment, every depressed thought, every uh, idea of I, I'm going crazy or I'm going to take my life. That doesn't scare you. Yeah. And it hasn't ever lessened your love. Surround these who are watching right now with your arms of love. Mm -hmm. I don't want them to just know that you love them. I want them to feel it. 
May they feel your healing presence and put a spark of hope in those who felt this is hopeless. Yeah. Help them to realize that we can't control all of the connections and chemistry and circumstances of life. But we do have some choices and we can choose to love you. We can choose to turn to you. We can choose to get help. We can choose community. We can choose medicine. We can choose our thoughts. And we pray that you would give us not just the courage to do this, but the power. Hmm. And for those who who feel like my, my chooser is broken, Start rebuilding that chooser mm-hmm. with hope today as we start putting pebbles on the good side of our mind to balance that scale. I pray for your blessing. Give them a good week. Give them a, 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 a sense that you are with them in every moment, uh, not just in, in the spiritual moments, but in the day-to-day moments. Mm-hmm. And I ask you to bless them greatly, physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, relationally, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys.